Hello, and welcome to the Movie Universe. I'm your host, Movie Fan. Today, I got something really special lined up for you. Because once again, I'll be teaming up with my good friend Alpha Line Simba to, well, I'll let him make the introduction. Hey guys! What's up? Alpha Lion Simba here, all the way from Alpha's Animal Kingdom, and I'm back on the movie universe. How am I doing today? Well, let's say that... Yep, we're gonna do a dare to compare. We're comparing Madagascar and The Wild, because lo and behold, both movies are pretty similar, but whereas Madagascar was both a critical and financial success, ended up spawning itself two sequels, and no, I'm not making this up, three spin-off TV series, on the other hand, The Wild was a critical and financial flop. So we're going to see which one did better and which one were equal, and whether or not The Wild really does deserve the hate that it gets. That's right. We're going to do a dare to compare on these films, because to the best of my knowledge, it has never been done before. I want to give a shout out to my friend and subscriber, Professor Dreamer, because he sent in a request asking if I could do a rant video on The Wild with Alpha Lion Simba. Well, we talked about it and we figured that, you know, there's never been a dare to compare on this. And I'll be honest, I hadn't seen The Wild before because, well, I thought it was a ripoff of Madagascar, so I didn't bother with it. And, well, we decided, so we decided it would be even more awesome to try to compare the two. So, Professor... This one's for you. And even though it's not exactly what you requested, I hope you like it. And I still want to give a shout out because you inspired this. And I want to acknowledge one thing. I really hate the Madagascar movie. And that's one of the reasons why I never bothered with The Wild in the first place. Because I hate those movies. I'm sorry, folks. I really do hate them. I love the TV series, The Penguins of Madagascar. But the Madagascar movies... I can't stand them. I really can't. And that's pretty much what held me back this whole time. So let's begin. Now, we're going to start with the animation. In both cases, the animation is actually really good, especially given that the animation does try to showcase the tone for each film, whereas Madagascar's animation is more cartoony looking so as to obtain comedic effect Whereas with the approach with the wild, I can describe it kind of as like what the original Lion King was going for, where it's 80% realism, where while some are cartoony with most of the other animals, the animators tried to match their anatomy as closely as possible while also anthropomorphizing their faces so that they can express human emotions. So both of them do pretty good in that regard. I gotta say, though, there's parts where the wild gets very visually impressive indeed. For example, there's a scene in Times Square where the characters are traveling through it when they're getting started on their mission, and you are absolutely blown away by all the imagery you see. Granted, most of it is product placement, but still, it's great. They even pull a little bit of that off in Madagascar as well, because there's a part where Alex gets hit with a tranquilizer dart, and <laughs> he just has all these psychedelic hallucinations. That was visually impressive, and it was pretty funny. You gotta give it there. Well, I can't deny it. The animation is pretty good on both counts. For Madagascar, obviously it's meant to look a little bit more cartoony, but... You know, the animation does work for the characters that they have. For the wild, they definitely do look a lot more realistic, like Alpha said. And really, there's nothing new I can add to it. Except, I do like how the animation really does work for the wild. Up next, let's talk about the characters. Now, with Madagascar, for the most part, the characters are pretty likable. I mean, I did like Alex and Marty and all them. Mostly because of the chemistry that 
they feel when they're all together, you do feel this sense of camaraderie between the four. And of course, who can forget the penguins? I mean, it's very easy to see why the penguins were the focus of the spinoff TV show, because every second that they're on screen, it's just hard not to enjoy it. Even the lemurs, they get their fair share of laughs here and there. Now, what about the wild? Well, for the most part, it's got a pretty likable set of characters too, but some tend to be a little more interesting than those of Madagascar. Like Samson, for example. He likes to tell all these stories about how he was from the wild when he was really born in a circus. Or yeah, it is pretty selfish to lie just to save face, but once you see his backstory, you kind of get where Samson was coming from because he was in almost the exact same predicament that Ryan is in at the start of the movie. And I'm gonna be honest, on my last rewatching of the film, I really felt for Samson when rewatching his backstory. Speaking of which, there's Ryan, who, like Marty, wants to get out of the zoo and wants to get out in the wild. However, in my honest to goodness opinion, I think that Ryan has more believable motives than Marty because what's Marty's motivation for wanting to go to the wild? Because he got bored of his everyday routine. I mean, there's nothing wrong with wanting to switch up your routine, but in these kind of movies, it can get pretty cliche, you know? Whereas with Ryan, you can kind of understand why because he just wants to feel better about himself. He feels disappointed that he can't live up to his father's fame. So he feels that the only way to get the respect that he wants is to go to the wild. I think Ryan is a bit of a more compelling character than Marty. Now as for Benny, the squirrel, he can be kind of hit or miss because yeah, there are some points where he can be pretty annoying, but at the same time, because of Jim Belushi's delivery, he has a few funny moments. Plus, he's very supportive of a friend towards Samson, giving him the confidence that he needs. Plus, when it comes to the sequels, while they're not the focus of this dare to compare, um, I do have to dock points for originality in terms of antagonists. Because in the sequels, their villains feel a little unoriginal. Because, like, Makunga from the second movie, his plan? Get rid of Zuba and become the new Alpha Lion. Hmm, sound a little familiar? Yup, that was Scar's plan. And Captain Dubois from the third movie, while intimidating, she feels a lot like Cruella DeVille 2.0. Whereas the Wild's Kazar, he feels more like his own guy. Where... He wants his kind to ascend to the top of the food chain while trying to make themselves carnivores. That's a little more creative. But of course, I have to say, my favorite character from the wild is without a doubt, Nigel, the koala. I can never get enough of that running gag where there's that toy that's always going, I'm so cuddly, I like you. And it drives him nuts. That's priceless. Plus, he has plenty of other great one-liners throughout the movie. So, in terms of the characters, I'd have to give the points to The Wild. For me, I find the characters in Madagascar to be excruciatingly annoying. I am sorry to say this. I really do find them to be annoying. I mean, Alex the Lion, he doesn't give me much to work with at all. I don't find his character to be that interesting. On top of that, you know... I still think it's rather stupid that here you got this lion who's getting beaten up by a little old lady. Look, I'll admit, I could go for a gag, but this just seems a bit too much, even for me. And, of course, Marty the Zebra. Look, I, I like Chris Rock as much as the next guy, but unfortunately, I don't find Marty to be very interesting. I mean, his voice definitely goes with the character, all right, but that's literally all I got for this guy. Sad but true. However, the characters in the wild, they're actually really good because I'll admit, Ryan, he does sound like a character you do sympathize with because, you know, he wants to try to prove himself. As for Nigel, <laughs> okay, that koala is downright hilarious. He really 
makes me crack up. Every time he does something, it is downright hilarious. He's clearly got a few screws loose, you know what I mean? Because the way he acts and everything he does, he is an absolute riot. Up next, the script. Now, I will have to say, both of them do very well with what they're trying to pull off. With Madagascar trying to be a goofy comedy about friendship, given that the four try to work together to solve their problems, and you feel the sense of camaraderie they have. Whereas the Wild wants to be more adventurous in a search and rescue sort of movie. And in both cases, you kind of get that. However, in regards to the script, I think there's one thing that, again, The Wild does a little better than Madagascar, and that would be the stakes. Because at the start of the movie, Marty thinks that his ticket to The Wild is to go to Connecticut. So his attempts to go to Connecticut are ultimately what leads to Alex, Melman, and Gloria breaking out of the zoo to try and bring him back when... Where's the stakes behind a zoo animal going to Connecticut? Really, anything that can happen to him there, which would be uh, animal control officers, wouldn't be any different from what happened in New York. So the stakes are pretty low, and the stakes only increase, really, once they're on the island. Whereas with the wild, you feel more of a sense of urgency to bring Ryan back to the zoo, because... He is legitimately going to Africa, and there's a clear-cut chance where if they don't get to Ryan in time, then it's basically game over. And again, he's going to Africa. There's tons of perils he could run into there. So you really feel the urgency to try and rescue Ryan. So again, I have to give the point to the Wild. Well, for the script, there's really nothing else I can add to this, Alpha. I think you pretty much said it all. Except that I totally agree with you. Madagascar is meant to be goofy. And yes, it's all about friendship. As for the wild, it is definitely more adventurous. And I definitely give it a lot more credit for that. Because granted, a goofy type movie isn't a bad thing. But like I said, this one just did not work for me. But it certainly did accomplish what it was going for. So I got to give them that. With the wild, it has a real adventure story going on here. For instance, you know, you got them traveling through New York trying to get to Ryan before he's sent to Africa. And when they're trying to catch up with the boat, even that's quite an adventurous moment in itself. Because I mean, here you got animals trying to drive a boat. And I would say that's pretty darn cool how they pulled that one off. So it's got a hero's journey kind of thing going for it. And frankly, I think that works a lot better then, oh, I'm bored with being at the zoo. Hey, let's go to Connecticut. Oh, no, we're in Madagascar. And, of course, both movies are comedy. But now there's the question. Which one is funnier? Well, again, I'd have to say The Wild is more funny. Because, like Doug Walker said, even though there are some pretty stupid moments, such as those random German dung beetles... There's some more out-of-the-box jokes in it. I mean, don't get me wrong. The humor in Madagascar was funny, in my opinion. But there are some times where, yeah, it kind of rolls your eyes a bit. Because there's quite a few times where they try to tease in a swear. Which, while it can be funny, doesn't really belong in a kid's movie. Plus, twice in the film we got some fart jokes. Which... I gotta say, it can be a pretty lazy way to get a laugh. Whereas, with The Wild, they try a few new things. Like, like I said, there's the whole gags with Nigel and the koala toy. That's priceless. Not to mention, the whole plot about the wildebeests thinking that that exact koala toy will take them to the top of the food chain. Classic. Not to mention, there are a few moments in the wild where I should be rolling my eyes. Like, with lines like, ah, the it lives! <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't help laughing at that. So, again, most of the comedy in the wild goes towards the actor's delivery. Especially with Eddie Izzard as Nigel, or even William Shatner as Kazar. 
along with Patrick Warburton, a.k.a. Kronk from The Emperor's New Groove, as Blag. All of them do great. So, again, the point has to go to the wild, but I will give Madagascar a few points, because it does have its fair share of funny moments. Well, unfortunately for me, this one's going to be pretty one-sided, because, I'm sorry, folks, I just cannot stand the Madagascar movie. I really can't. You know, the humor, it does nothing for me at all. The jokes, I don't find them to be very funny. I really don't. I could see what they were going for, but they don't make me laugh. They really don't. Most of them are about as cliche as it gets, and so much of it feels like it was just taken from so many other movies. And I'm talking way back, because when Alex is running into everything and stepping on thorns, it feels like a ripoff of Abbott and Costello or Laurel and Hardy, and not in a good way either. And again, an old lady beating up Alex. Come on. I'm sorry. I don't think that's funny. I think it's dumb. I really do. So for me, the comedy does not work. For The Wild, on the other hand, the comedy is definitely very good on this one. Granted, it does have some weird things going on, like, for instance, the pigeons. They were pretty weird, because because the one pigeon they're talking to, he talks like he's from India or something, and boy, he acts like he's got a few screws loose. So yeah, that part, that's really weird to me. Other than that, the comedy that's going on here, it's pretty darn good, actually. I mean, I did love the curling game that Samson and his friends had going on with the penguins. I love all the jokes that are done by Nigel, because he is hilarious. If we lose, I'm gonna rip my head off. <laughs> and yours. He's taunting us. Listen. Stop laughing at us, you solar twit. If you don't give us ice creams pretty quick, you're gonna walk the blank, sir. Stop saying that. <laughs> that is priceless. I absolutely love it. So, in conclusion, both movies are really good. However, The Wild gets you on the edge of the seat more often when it tries to, and it tries more with its comedy. So I'd have to say, in my opinion, even though objectively speaking, Madagascar may be the better one, The Wild is more enjoyable, at least in my opinion. Both movies get a silver medal on my scale, but Madagascar is a 7.5 out of 10, whereas The Wild is an 8 out of 10. Well, with me, it's going to be a bit of a different story because I've made it very clear that I despise Madagascar. So for me, I wouldn't give this movie any stars at all because I'm sorry. Like I said before, the humor does nothing for me. I don't find their jokes to be funny at all. And, you know, the scenario, it doesn't work for me. I'm sorry. I, I just cannot see what everybody sees in this movie. As for The Wild, it's got a good cast. I love the characters. The humor is excellent because of the way it's delivered, just like Alpha said. But it does have its annoying points. So I would give this movie 8 out of 10 as well. And that's pretty much all I got for this Dare to Compare. Before we go, I want to thank Alpha Line Simba for helping me out on this one because this felt like something that, of course, we had to do together. Because if you ever seen Alpha's channel, and I highly recommend you do, he does a lot of animal videos, and he's really good at it. I also want to thank Professor Dreamer once again for inspiring this Dare to Compare. Now, Professor, I know this wasn't exactly what you were hoping for, but I hope you like it. This is Movie Fan, signing off. Well, that was our little dare to compare. Thanks for watching. Hope you liked it. And again, I'd like to thank Movie Fan for letting me be a part of this. It's always a pleasure to help him out. Awful Lion Simba, out.